Hello, welcome back to my series of tutorials in two dimension. In this video, I'll show you the step by step procedure to create this figure. So when you look at this figure, you can see that it is made up of a rectangle with a dimension of 100 by 85. So I should first create a rectangle. In the last tutorial, we haven't set the limits. In this tutorial, we will set the limits first, then we will create the figure. Why do we set a limits in a drawing? Because as you know, this model space is infinite in nature. It starts from minus infinity and goes towards plus infinity in all directions. But you don't need the entire screen to work at a time. Depending upon the size of the drawing to be created, we take out a rectangular area from the infinite screen and you create the drawings within this area. In the limits command, you actually define this rectangular area in which you create the drawings. But how will you define a rectangle? A rectangle can be defined by defining all the four edges or by defining all the four corners. But do we need all the four corners? No, we need only the coordinates of the lower left and the upper right corner. So how is the coordinate of the upper left and the lower right calculated? Let's see that. The coordinates of the upper left can be obtained by extracting the x coordinate from the lower left and the y coordinate from the upper right. Why? Because the upper left and the lower left are along the same vertical line and you know that the x coordinate of all points lying along the same vertical line will be the same. And the y coordinate of all points lying along the same horizontal line will be the same. Similarly, the coordinates of the lower right can be obtained by extracting x from the upper right since the upper right is right above the lower left and the y can be taken from the lower left corner. That means once you give the limits command, it will ask you only for the lower left and the upper right corner. If you don't want to plot any negative values, your lower left should be always kept at the origin. That means at 0, 0. And how will you define the upper right corner? Before you define the upper right corner, you should go through the dimensions in your drawing and you should find out the maximum dimension. In this figure, the maximum dimension is 100 units. So what will happen if I give the upper right corner as 100, 100? This figure which you drew will hit with the boundary of the screen. So in order to avoid that, you have to give a value which is above 100. So instead of giving 100, 100, I'll give 150, 150. So that your drawing will be well within the screen. Once you set the limits, AutoCAD regenerates this area for you. And it regenerates not only the area within the limits, but the certain area surrounding the limit will also get regenerated. What is meant by regeneration? Putting it in simple terms, when the software regenerates a certain area in the model space, it actually activates that area for the user so that whatever calculations or drawing or editing performed this area will be done very fast. Since certain amount of area outside the limits has also got regenerated, you can exceed the limits if the situation demands it. Next, we have to magnify this area in such a way that it will fill up the entire screen. Otherwise, the area which you have defined using the limits command will remain in a particular corner of the screen. Sometimes, only part of the limit which you have defined may be within the screen and rest may be outside the screen. But there are times in which the limit which you create may be completely outside the screen. So how will you bring the limits within the screen? So that is a very important step which you got to do immediately after giving the limits command. That is, you have to give a zoom all. Using the zoom commands all option, when you magnify, AutoCAD will automatically magnify this area which is defined using the limits command in such a way that it will fill up the entire screen. So let's give zoom all. Just type Z for zoom followed by the all option. Just click on the all option. Now you can see that limit fills up the entire screen. And this is where you are going to actually create the drawing. Since certain amount of area outside the limit is also regenerated, you can draw outside the limits if you want. Next we will create this figure after setting a suitable limit. I'll give limits command. When I'm asked to specify the lower left corner, I'll give 0, 0 and uh, upper right corner I'll give 150, 150. Now the limit is set. 
Next, I have to bring the limits to the screen. For that, I'll give zoom command followed by all option. Now the limit is taken to the screen. Next, I'll construct this rectangle. To construct this rectangle, I can give a line command and I can create four lines, but I'm not going to do that. But instead, I'm going to make use of the rectangle command. So just click on a rectangle. Okay, when I'm asked to specify the first corner of the rectangle, I'll click somewhere over here. When I'm asked to specify the other corner, I'm not going to pick the other corner now, but instead I'll go to dimension option. Now I'll give the length of the rectangle is 85. And the width of the rectangle is 100 units. Now it will ask you to specify the opposite corner. Now I'll click the opposite corner over here. Now I have constructed the rectangle. You can just pan it slightly to centralize it within the screen. Next, I have to construct arcs at the corners of this rectangle. For that, you don't have to draw arcs at the corners, but instead you can create these arcs using the fillet command. But if you look at the figure, you can see that we have four corners. That means we have to execute fillet command four times. But we don't need to do that, but instead there is a smarter way. We know that the rectangle falls in the family of polylines. We can fillet a polyline in a more effective way. Let's do that. So I'll click on the fillet command or else you can type the letter F for that. Now click on the radius option to define the radius. Here the radius is given as R10 for corners. That means the radius is 10 units. So I'll type 10. Now it will ask you to select the 2D polyline to fillet. Just click on the polyline. The moment you click on the polyline, we can see that we have filleted all the four corners simultaneously. Next, we will create this slot as well as this hole and mirror these two features about a horizontal axis so that we can get an exact mirror image here. So we'll start with the slot. For that, I'll start with the line command and I'll create a line right from this midpoint. So just click this midpoint and you have to activate the ortho mode to draw only horizontal and vertical lines. So press F8 function key to activate ortho. Now you can type the distance at 25. Okay. So I'll give the direct distance method to construct this line. So simply type the value 25 after keeping the cursor in the downward direction. Just give an enter. So the line is drawn. Now give one more enter to go out of this command. This line is nothing but a center line over here. We will create a copy of this line onto the left side as well as on the right side. Okay, since this being the center line, we can offset the center line in the leftward as well as in the rightward direction through a distance of 7.5 units, which is half of 15 units, which is the slot width. So I'll give offset command. And when I'm asked to give the offset distance, I'll give the value 7.5. Then this is the object offset and side to offset. Then again select the center line that is the object offset and side to offset. Then give an enter to go out of the offset command. Now you don't need this line anymore. So I'll just select the center line and click on erase to remove it. Next I'll connect these two endpoints using another straight line. So I click on line again and draw a line starting from this endpoint to this endpoint and just give another enter. Now we have created the slot. Next, we have to construct this hole. You know that the center line of this hole is at a distance of 15 units leftward as well as 15 units downward with respect to the horizontal as well as the vertical line. So what you can do is just give an offset command again and type the offset distance as 15 units. When I'm asked to select the object to offset, I'll select this and I'll pick a point over here to specify the side. Now we can create the circle. The diameter of the circle is given as 12 units. So let's make that circle. I'll click on circle, center diameter method, and I'll choose this endpoint as a center point. When I'm asked to give the diameter, I can give the value 12. So the circle is drawn. Next, we have to create a mirror image of the slot as well as the circle about a horizontal axis. So let's go to mirror command. So I'll click on mirror or else you can type the letter MI for mirror and I'll select these two objects using a standard window and I'll select this as the first point on the mirror line and this particular midpoint as a second point on the mirror line. 
Now it will ask you whether you want to erase the source object. That means, do you want to erase this original object which is taking part in the mirror command? No, I don't want to erase it. Since no is a default, I can just give an enter to get the mirror image on the side. Now you can erase this particular line which you have created using the offset command. I'll select that line and click on erase. Next we have to create this curved opening. You can see that this distance is uh, 26 units and followed by an arc. So first of all, we will draw a line with a distance of 26 units. So I'll click on line command and I'll select this midpoint as a start point of the line and I'll type the distance as 26. Next, I have to create two parallel lines at a distance of 9 units in the upward as well as in the downward direction to create these two lines. So I'll click on offset and I'll give an offset distance of 9. When I'm asked to select the objects, I'll select this particular line. When I'm asked to give the side, I'll pick a point on the side. Then again, it will ask you to select the object to offset. So I've selected it and this is the side. Now we have created these two parallel lines. Next, we have to create an arc with a radius of 9 units. So for that, we can go to arc command and I'll choose start point, center point, end point arc since we have these three points available here. AutoCAD creates arcs in the anticlockwise direction. So we should pick points accordingly. So I'll choose this point as a start point. The next point is the center point. I'll choose this as a center point. And the next point is the end point, which is this point. Now you can see that it has drawn arc in the anticlockwise direction this way. Okay. Next, we will erase this line since it's no longer required. Now we can create this arc. For that, the easiest method is to draw a circle. Then we will trim exact half of the circle. So let's create a circle using the center radius method. And the radius of the circle is given as 21. So I'll pick this midpoint as the center point. When I'm asked to give the radius, I'll type 21. Now we have got all the necessary elements in this figure. Next, we will give a trim command to remove the unwanted portions from this object. So I'll click on trim or else you can type the letter TR. Now, when I'm asked to select the cutting edges, I can either choose cutting edges individually or else I can give enter to execute the default option, which is select all. Select all means all the objects on the screen will be taken as a cutting edge. Thereby, the original cutting edge will also get included. If you are using older versions of AutoCAD, at the select cutting edges prompt, you can type all to select all objects. But in the latest versions, in the trim command, the select all appear as a default option. So simply by giving an enter, you are actually selecting the entire objects as a cutting edge. Next, you can select the object to trim. I'll trim this, this area, this line, this line, as well as this one. Now you have completed the figure. Hope you like this tutorial. In the process of completing this figure, we have practiced a number of drawing as well as editing commands in AutoCAD. I'll catch you in my next 2D drafting tutorial. Till then, bye for now and take care.